let's talk now about the properties of the logarithmic function. And if you'll remember, since we, since we said that the exponential function and the logarithmic function are inverses of each other, then they take on all of the properties of inverses, meaning that in order to find inverses, remember we have to switch the x and the y positions which means our domain and ranges switch places also because domain is associated with x's and range is associated with the y's. Well, think about that as we go through. When we talk about the exponential function, we had properties of those also. And if you'll remember, our domain for the exponentials was all real numbers and our range was 0 to infinity. Well, for the logarithmic functions, the domain is the positive real numbers, or 0 to infinity. The range is the set of all real numbers, which is negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, notice that those have switched places, because they are, in fact, inverses. For the exponential function, we had a y-intercept at 1. For the logarithmics, we have an x-intercept at 1. See, they're just exactly opposite of each other. For the exponentials, the x-axis was an asymptote. For the logarithmic functions, exactly opposite the y-axis is an asymptote, in this case a vertical asymptote. Um, the logarithmic function is decreasing if we're talking about an a that is between 0 and 1, or it is increasing if our a value or our base is greater than 1. This is actually the exact same as the exponential function was. Very interesting and also we had some points. For the exponential function we had points of 0, 1, we had 1a, and then we had negative 1, 1 over a. Well again, since we're talking about inverses, you would expect that those would switch x and y places, and in fact they do for the logarithmics. And the graph is smooth and continuous with no corners or gaps. When I say go, when I go through all these properties, I do this because if you understand the properties of the exponential function, and if you understand that the exponentials and the logs are inverses of each other, then you'll automatically know all the properties of the log function, because you'll just switch the x and the y's, and we don't have to memorize to another set of properties. Um, here on our picture, we have a picture of this is what the uh, logarithmic um, function looks like. Oops, that wasn't very pretty there. Now, if you'll remember, our exponential function looks something uh, like this. It's kind of crude. Oops, that wasn't even very pretty. Something like that. Now, don't those look like those are inverses of each other? Don't they look like they are symmetrical about the line y equals x? Absolutely. So even visually, we can see that those are inverses of each other. Okay, so just kind of to quickly recap, you have to be familiar with the properties of both the exponential and the log functions. And don't forget, you're going to be practicing switching forms. Now, these are not inverses of each other. They are just two different forms of writing the same thing, but you have to be very good at switching them back and forth. I use um, sort of the top of a Z uh, sort of motion, right? Uh, the top of a Z, if we look at a Z, I would just look at the top of it. So, um, take the base, raise it to the other side, equals the argument. If you can switch these back and forth, and if you understand the properties, then we're going to be okay on this bit of material.